Hello everyone and welcome to Ocean Cadence. In our video today, we will be undertaking the topic of rotary vane type steering gear system and understanding how the various elements comprise the system and make it into a functional system. So let us move ahead. The rotary vane steering gear is one of the common designs that is out of the two alternate designs, the vane type and the ram type that are available on seagoing ships. The rotary vane steering gear gives us a very major advantage over the ram type that is it provides us with a compact design for vessels that have beam restrictions and passage restrictions such as going to lake areas or similar areas with beam restrictions and that is why the compact design is helpful. Now as we are already familiar that for a steering gear system to function we need a hydraulic oil media to make sure that the movement is available. The hydraulic oil offers us inherent advantage that for a small quantity of oil and with a small amount of work done we can gather a large amount of movement. Now how do we use this oil to make the rotary vane type steering gear functional? As we know that first we have to make a restricted passage for the oil to move into where the oil can be restricted in terms of flow and when we try to compress the oil between two restricted passages it would in turn create the motion. This restricted passage is created by set of vanes that is the fixed vanes and the rotating vanes. The fixed vanes are attached to the stator whereas the rotating vanes are attached to the rotor. So the stator the rotor, the fixed vane and the rotary vane make the entire pressure chamber where we are supplying the oil for the rudder stock movement. The rudder stock is attached to the rotor with the help of either a pin or a key because it is impossible for us to access the annular area and provide any other securing medium such as doubling or bolting that is why the pin design is used which makes it easy and convenient for us to attach the rotor to the rudder stock. This rudder stock is the one that conveys the motion further to the rudder and turns it. The stator uses the anchor bolt to be attached further. Now let us see the basic function in this top view diagram as to how the passage and the oil are interactive with each other. When the oil flows in it traces a pipeline passage and enters the block. By entering the block it goes into the restricted passage and enters a chamber the annular space which is available for the oil to enter. Once it enters here, what it would do is that because of the restriction of the passage, the one which is free to move that is the rotating part that are the rotary vanes, it would create a pressure on the face of the rotary vanes and cause the rotary vane to turn. Now the other annular space from its previous motion would also have oil. So that oil would get squeezed out and would trace the return path and leave. Similarly. In case of the other side of movement, the paths would be reversed and the annular space roll would also be reversed. That is the oil would enter into the alternate path and enter into the other annular space chamber and cause the rotary vane to move into the opposite direction. Thus, the movement of the rotary vanes within this annular space is what causes the turning of the rudder stock and simultaneously the rudder. Under sea going vessels, this entire passage is free enough to provide 35 degrees port to 35 degrees starboard of movement that is total 70 degrees of movement from one complete hard side to other complete hard side. Also if it is a two fixed and two moving vane type system the entire turnover ratio can be changed and it can be as high as 130 degrees. But what we have in normal sea going vessels is the 70 degree requirement as per the SOLAS regulations and that is why the 35 degree hard to 35 degree hard design ratio is provided. Now after understanding how this system works let us see how the design is secured. As I already told you that the rotary vanes are secured to the rotor and the rotor is further keyed to the rudder stock or pinned to the rudder stock but the stator is the one which is the strength member for the annular space. So the stator as I already told you is secured via the anchor bolt. This anchor bolt keeps the bracket that is the permanent strength member along with the bracket stool attached to the stator flanges and thus making it under compression and securing the entire stator system. This is how we make sure that there is no relative motion between the stator and the rotor in terms of the mechanical parts. Only thing moving would be the rotary vanes inside. So by restricting the mechanical movement of the stator we make sure that there is no slippage or no leak between the stator and the rotor under any circumstances. 
as you can see here in the side cross section the rudder stock is the one further passing through the rudder carrier and then penetrating on the lower side and further connecting to the rudder this lower side is the permanent ship's hull area and the rudder carrier provides not only the carriage but also the securing and the segregating section which allows the rudder stock to penetrate safely and also seals as well as carries the sealing space of the rudder stock the stool as well as the bracket would comprise of the material of the grey cast iron of the spheroidal cast iron also the rotary vanes and the stator vanes would also be comprised of cast steel that is the this material for the fixed vanes and the rotary vanes would comprise of the cast steel or it can also comprise alternately of the spheroidal grey cast iron what we would do by doing so is that spheroidal grey cast iron is a material that also has a good lubricity index so it would not erode so easily as compared to other materials and would not get heated up as well because it has a high heat dissipation characteristic also in case if the vanes are comprised of the spheroidal grey cast iron the rotor and the stator faces would also have a sealing strip in between them the purpose of this sealing strip would be to ensure that there is no relative leakage between the annular spaces of the different annular chambers and that is why the steel sealing strips would ensure the annular passages are segregated from each other the segregation would be on a level that it would ensure almost 96 to 98% of isolation efficiency as you can also see in the side view diagram that the anchor bolt which is further being passing through the bracket the bracket and the top flange of the stator as well as the lower flange of the stator would have certain clearances between them the purpose of this clearance is to give us an idea of the wear down and the bumping limits in case if there is a force that is exerted on the rudder that causes the rudder to jump in its position there has to be a certain amount of margin that makes sure that there is no rigidity in the rudder and the rudder stock and the steering gear assembly and this jump can be accommodated up to a certain extent without damaging the steering gear system that is where the bumping clearance comes into play and by measuring this bumping clearance at the lower half of the stator flange and the bracket side we can ensure that the jump is always available and the mechanical passage is not restricted there are no limitations within the prescribed readings of the manufacturer if the clearance goes above the manufacturer's limit then we have to take corrective actions accordingly Similarly the wear down clearance also shows us the characteristic trait of not only the rotating member but also the carrier bearing that is if there is a subsequent drop or the pintles down below there is a subsequent drop in the steering gear assembly this vertical clearance that is the wear down clearance in the top stator flange and the bracket would get altered and thus give us an idea so measures have to be taken accordingly now if we look carefully at the design of the anchor bolt you can see that the anchor bracket and the bolt itself has synthetic rubber shock absorbers in between that is the anchor bolt and the bracket are not rigidly fixed why this is so because again as i said that in case of harsh weather in case of hard movements or in case of jumping we have to offer a certain amount of flexibility between the bracket and the bolt to make sure that there is no significant wear down and that is where the synthetic rubbers act as the shock absorbers and make sure that the wear down does not occur also the bush is the one which separates the rubber and the inner part of the bolt so the bush also acts as the intermediate member that is you can see that by fitting first the synthetic rubber shock absorbers subsequently the bush and through the bolt and then by tightening on the bolt side we can make the entire system into compression and make sure that it is properly secured as well as has a certain amount of flexibility within its relative members now having understood the construction design and the different parts of the rotary wing steering gear system as well as the securing assembly let us understand how the design functions here i have the diagram of a typical two identical unit system so let us focus on one unit to make sure that we can trace the line system as we can see that first of all the storage tank from there would have a pump arrangement that would allow the oil to flow into the respective units tank and the oil to be available at all points of time from here through the units tank we would have a pump that is the variable delivery type pump and from the pump we would be drawing oil that is the hydraulic oil which is available in the tank and sending it further into the line 
Now, as the oil climbs into the line, it goes into a 4 by 3 DCV, the direction control wall. And this direction control wall is where the entire game changes. As I told you earlier that we can turn the rotary vanes on both the sides. So, it is the DCV that through its passage of oil and depending upon which port is aligned to the subsequent other port would decide which direction the system would turn. Each individual unit that is the unit on the left side as well as the unit on the right side would have a capacity to perform the entire function of the steering by itself. Right now as we can see the DCV is in its neutral position and the oil does not pass and is under recirculation. Similarly when the DCV moves towards the right side and allows the straight passage of oil, the oil further goes into this system and enters the directional control wall. By entering here, it would go further into the system and enter into the passage where the pipes lead it into the rotary vane system that is the annular passage between the rotary vane and the fixed vane. Once it enters into the passage, the oil fills the annular passage and then subsequently transmits the motion by rotating the rotary vane within the passage and as we know that there would be oil in the other space as well from the preceding motion of the rotary vane system in the other direction. So that oil will be squeezed out and then that oil would lead back from the return line from the other direction control valve system and again back into the line and through the return line it is supposed to head back to the tank. Before heading back into the tank it has a magnetic and particle filter system where it loses all its dust as well as the wear down particles which have ingressed into the oil and then once it is separated it goes back into the tank in ambient condition and is available to be circulated again into the system. As we can see into the single unit design, there is another similar block of 4 by 3 DCV that has no electronic signal line or external input as we show into the top half. This is the one which is responsible for the manual operation during the emergency condition. That is the emergency operation of the steering gear would be done by this system. As we already know that if there is a power failure, the auto DCV would then isolate the system and thus by allowing the movement through the manual direction control wall, what we would do is once we press it from one direction to the other, we would allow the steering gear to turn through manual operation. And this manual operation is done by simultaneous communication between the bridge and the person standby in the steering gear room to convey up until what direction the steering gear has to be turned. And that is why the system is shown separately over here. On the top side, what we show here that is the dotted line. This is also the servo system from where the servo oil enters for the movement of the DCV through the spool passage where the movement has to take place. And the idea for this movement that is the signal from the bridge or from the local in case of tryout also would be conveyed with the help of an electronic medium that is an electronic signal. So that is how the direction is being controlled. The pressure gauge system would at all points of time show the subsequent pressure in the line and make sure that the pressure does not exceed a certain value and is available for the watchkeeper to witness at all points of time. Both the system in the circulation side as well as on the steering gear side would have oil relief or shock absorbing mechanism. What this does is that in case of excessive load on the steering gear, or let's say for example if I take the circulation side first in case if we are circulating cold oil under cold weather conditions what it would do is that the pressure generated in the system would be much high and that is where the relief system the shock absorbers or the hydraulic relief valves would allow the oil to be relieved and thus keep the pressure under check in the circulation side. And subsequently once the oil is circulating under even ambient temperature also in the annular passage between the rotary vane and the fixed vane and the subsequent lines connecting this system. In case there is too hard an effect of the weather onto the system, then we have to allow a certain margin of flexibility for the oil to be squeezed out and pressure to be handled so that the pressure does not increase too high. This is where the relief valves or the hydraulic shock absorbers come into the play. And by doing so, what they do is they regulate the pressure within the passage and these regulation values can be as high as 100 bar also. So, this ensures that no untoward damage is caused onto the veins, the rotor and the stator. As we know that the rotor and the stock design is the keyed design. So, there would be no wear on the key or the pin also and similarly the dowels which secure the stator to the stator veins would also not be damaged because of excessively high oil pressure. 
The tank to tank circulation system would also allow the oil at any point of time to stay at an ambient temperature and by doing so we make sure that the steering gear is ideally responsive and under ambient condition at any demand stage and can be started and operated under any condition. So the vessel is always ready to move at all points of time. I hope that this comprehensive understanding of the rotary vane steering gear system helps you to grasp a better hold of knowledge of the concerned topic. And in case if any doubt still persists, please feel free to drop into the comment section and let us know the topics that are left or the questions that come across into your mind and we will be happy to address them and answer them. Please do make sure to share our videos with your colleagues and subscribe to our channel and help us grow together. Thank you.